Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. This is the uh, next episode in uh, Quranic Reflections of a Layman. Inshallah, today I'll be talking about uh, another topic that is somewhat difficult, complicated, and a bit controversial. Uh, Allah says in chapter 15, verse 9, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem, Inna nahnu nazalna zikra wa inna lahu la hafizun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we are the one who sends down the dhikra, which is the remembrance, which is another word for the Qur'an. And Allah says, we are the ones who are going to preserve it. So it is very clear that the Qur'an presents itself not only as a revelation, uh, but also that the Qur'an is going to be able to protect itself. And this act of protection is an act that Allah has undertaken. So we as people who believe that the Qur'an is the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our creator, we recognize that this means that the word of God has been preserved. And we believe that other scriptures before the Qur'an have had tahrif or modification. Now, in popular belief, in popular Islamic belief, we have a very simple approach to the preservation of the Qur'an. That is, we have this mushaf, and you may have a different version of it, a slightly bigger version at home. And we have been taught, many of us, that there is only one mushaf in the entire planet. Every single mushaf is exactly the same. Every uh, word, every letter, every haraka is exactly the same. This is the popular belief. Uh, but in fact, um, I've done a bit of uh, research into this topic, and it's very obvious that this popular belief is not accurate. Um, and inshallah, today I want to explain what this is without going into a lot of detail and then really explain why this is an important topic for you to pay attention to and perhaps pass on to others, um, especially your children. So the first thing is, in fact, we do have some variations between the Masahif. Uh, there are today what are called 10 canonical Qira'at or recitations. Each Qira'ah represents a specific way of reading the Qur'an. So for example, and I'll give you some examples of what type of variations exist. We all recite Surah Al-Fatiha, so very familiar with it. We say, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Maliki Yawm din But it is also okay to say, Maliki Yawm din right? Malik and Malik are slightly different words. One means king and the other one means lord or someone who has essentially all the power, right? So these are actually two different words, but we are allowed to recite it one way or the other. Uh, there are other variations, even in Surah Al-Fatiha. For example, we all know we say, إِهْدِنَا الصَّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ صَرَاطَ الَّذِينَ أَنَامْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ But it is also allowed for you to say, إِهْدِنَا الزِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ Even though it sounds very odd, especially to somebody who has been reciting Surah Al-Fatiha and listening to Surah Al-Fatiha, we have a legitimate canonical recitation that you're allowed to recite where you say ehdina zirat al mustaqim you're allowed to say zirat al lazina anamta alayhim and in fact you don't even say zirat al lazina anamta alayhim you're allowed to say zirat al lazina anamta alayhum right and again this is kind of a grammatical thing usually we we kind of naturally feel that it has to be alayhim maghdubi alayhim but you are allowed to say maghdubi alayhum anamta alayhum so these variations exist and in fact there are 10 different uh, recitations as i mentioned the most popular recitation which is what you are most likely going to hear in your uh, masjid is the recitation of what's called hafs an asim uh, so basically the recitation of hafs which he learned from uh, Asim, but there are others. For example, there is the recitation of Qalun, uh, uh, of Warsh an Nafia. There's the recitation of Ibn Kathir, not the historian, the the, the Qari Ibn Kathir. There's a recitation of Hamza Zayyat, um, as we as they call him. So there are ten uh, actually canonical uh, recitations that you're allowed to do now. There's also this popular belief that these um, variations are just limited to sort of pronunciation, slight vowel changes. There are actually consonantal changes, um, and in fact, in some cases, meaning changes. So for example, um, we we know, uh, uh, you know, uh, this verse in chapter 37, 12, where Allah says, 
بل عجب تو ويسخرون you're also allowed to read بل عجب تا ويسخرون عجب تا means you were surprised عجب تو means I was surprised so depending on how you read it you're either saying the prophet was surprised by their reaction or Allah was surprised by the reaction so different meanings in some cases the differences actually has implications for fiqh so for example a famous verse in surah al-maida verse 6 where we learn about the concept of mash or ghusl before you do wudu right depending on how you read it there you can either read it as arjulikum or arjulakum right if you read it as arjulikum then it's connected to mash if you read it as arjulakum it's connected to ghusl because you say uh, and then you can say right? then the arjulakum is connected to ghusl if you say arjulikum it's connected to fa'amsihu biru'usikum wa arjulikum so some people question whether you should wipe your feet it's okay to wipe your feet to do masq or you actually have to do ghusl so there are some uh, changes in meanings as well and it has implications for even things like uh, fiqh and the final variation which is important is some people say well you know there are variations in you know cons uh, in, in vowels and some consonants maybe ya becomes ta and so on and so forth but there is actually at least one variation that i know of where there is an extra word and this is in the very famous word verse in surah at tawbah where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, says a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem was sabiqun al awwalun من المهاجرين والانصار والذين اتبعهم باحسان رضي الله عنهم ورضوا عنه اعد لهم جنات تجري تحتها الانهار that's how we normally recite in haft al asim but there is a version that uh, i believe is even kathir uh, or maybe hamza zayat i'm not sure uh, where you say اعد لهم جنات تجري من تحتها الانهار right so the word min which is obviously uh, a separate word in arabic is included in one of the recitations it is not there in another recitation and today you can actually buy a mushaf where you'll see men and no men so there are these differences and it is important for us to be aware that there are these ten qiraat and that they are connected to the hadith of the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam who said uh, nazal al quran unzil al quran ala sabat akhruf right in seven modes of uh, seven modes we don't really know what the connection between akhruf and qiraat is that's another kind of complicated topic but the important thing here is that although the quran is categorical and we obviously believe in the quran therefore when allah says inna nahnu nazalna dhikra wa inna lahu lahafidhun that's all we need to know we take it as a, an article of faith that the Quran has been preserved, but neither the Quran nor uh, the Hadith tradition really tells us how and where uh, the Quran is preserved, right? This is really up to speculation. And so you might be wondering, okay, this is fine, but why are we even discussing why this is an important topic? Well, here's what I believe is happening. Um, in the Christian world in 2005, there was a very, very important book uh, that came out by uh, an author named Bart Ehrman. Uh, he wrote a book called Misquoting Jesus. And that book essentially established through looking at the Christian tradition, right, information from Christian uh, tradition, that in fact, the New Testament has been corrupted. There have been modifications, there have been insertion. So even though you have these four gospels, the uh, canonical gospels to you know, Luke, Matthew, Mark, uh, and John, Bart Ehrman demonstrated very clearly using Christian scholarship that in fact these books have been edited and modified and things have been added and so on and so forth. And this created a, a huge um, uh, controversy in the Christian community and in many people actually I, that I know started doubting Christianity because they had been taught a certain version of history about the Bible and then they found out that in fact this wasn't true. And Bart Ehrman himself who actually was a a practicing Christian uh, and evangelical Christian who went to theological seminaries, he became an agnostic. He left Christianity because he recognized that um, that he had been taught a lie or something kind of in, in, inaccurate. So how does this apply to the Quran? Well, I want to start first of all with um, a personal story that happened to me. I used to go for Fajr with uh, uh, a couple of friends on weekends and, you know, I was 
trying to learn and memorize some surahs and Surat al-Jinn in particular was something that I was reading. And while I was learning uh, the recitation online, I played on uh, a different recitation rather than Hafs where if you're familiar with Surat al-Jinn, you know, you read وَأَنَّهُ تَعَلَى جَدُّ رَبِّنَا وَأَنَّهُ رُجَالٌ مِّنَ الْإِنسِ يَعُدُونَ and so on and so forth. There's, you know, many verses that begin with anna, 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 anna. And I heard this recitation where the reciter, the Qari, was clearly saying inna. He was saying وَأَنَّهُ تَعَلَى جَدُّ رَبِّنَا وَأَنَّهُ رُجَالٌ مِّنَ الْإِنسِ Right? And I was not an expert in Arabic grammar, but I had learned, you know, harf inna and harf anna and and I knew both of these were harf tawheed, you know, for emphasis, but I knew that these were two different words, and I that was the first time I was exposed to it. And interestingly enough, I played that recitation, which is a valid Quranic recitation to my friends. These are very knowledgeable Muslims, and my friend literally leapt, <laughs> and he said, you should burn the phone, you should burn the mp3, and you should never visit that site again, because this is a corruption, this is not the Quran. Um, and that's when I realized how seeped into our common culture this belief is that you know every word in the quran should be recited in only one way and anything else is is, is not accurate um and and um and this is a big problem right because this is not accurate our own islamic tradition tells us that there are at least 10 different canonical uh, modes of recitation or qaraat that are legitimate you can pray in any of these 10 no problem if you want to go with Hafsa Nasim, no problem. But don't say that these other recitations are not the Qur'an because they are Qur'an. So in the name of defending the Qur'an, my friend was actually rejecting the Qur'an, right? How ironic. Um, and then many years later, um, Sheikh Yasir Qadi, who's a very famous uh, preacher uh, and Sheikh based in the United States, he, in one video, and he's very knowledgeable, mashallah, about this particular topic, he said, Look, the popular understanding of how the Quran has been preserved has a, has some problems. You know, he said, look, I've looked at all of this and I don't think it quite add, adds up. And everyone sort of jumped on him and said, Yasser, Sheikh Yasser doesn't know what he's talking about and so on and so forth. Here's why I want you to pay attention, right? I'm not going to sit and explain the differences between the Qur'an. Um, I have some ilm, inshallah, and maybe I'll do a video, but here's what I want you to take away. Today, more than ever before, the Western academicians, Muslims and non-Muslims, are doing research on this topic. Every week, I see more people talking about this topic, right? Remember, the a book by Bart Ehrman didn't come out in the 17th century, it came out 15 years ago. Similarly, we are starting to see lots of academicians, you know, in Stanford. At Stanford, you have people like Behnam Sadavi. At Harvard, you have people like uh, uh, Shadi uh, Hikmat Nasser. You have um, Haydam Sidqi uh, from Notre Dame. You have um, Daniel Brubaker and a few others, Gabriel Reynolds. Many academicians, Marine Van Putten, they're all doing research on these topics and writing academic journal articles about it. And they're writing books about it. And before you know it, this is going to be at your doorstep. And your children are going to wake up one day and be like, hey, my Muslim friend said that our understanding of this mushaf is not accurate. That the Uthmani mushaf actually had some difference of words between them, right? The five uh, mushafs, uh, they had some differences of words. And this is uh, not from Christian sources. This is from a Tabari and others who have written about it and said, actually, the Uthmani mushaf actually had some differences, right? We believe that these are all legitimate differences. But it's very important, therefore, for you to go and do some research, inshallah, about these topics and make sure that when your children come up to you and be like, Baba, Mama, hey, you said something about this mushaf, and I found out that that's not true. You don't want them to start questioning everything you say because children pay a lot of attention. They don't like to be fooled. And so um, we don't want to be in a situation where the Muslim community you know, starts to question the Quran, the validity of the Quran. The Quran is the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, we should have no doubt about it. But it's very important that we understand our own tradition, that we understand that these popular uh, conceptions, misconceptions about the Quran are not valid and that sometimes they can backfire. So, inshallah, this very short video, and I covered a lot of ground in this, um, gives you the impetus to go and do research on the seven, seven ahruf, the ten qiraat, 
the canonization of the uh, uh, the, the Masahif under Uthman, the canonization by uh, Ibn Mujahid, um, uh, and, and, and so on and so forth. So this has happened over a long period of time. Uh, and today, just because we recite Hafsa and Asim in many parts of the world because of the kind of Cairo edition, doesn't mean that these other variations are not accurate. So inshallah, this is beneficial and useful. Please post your comments and, and questions. Um, and if time permits, inshallah, I'll do another video where I'll try to explain kind of this very complicated um, uh, aspect of the Quranic recitations. I will also post some very valuable resources where you can actually go online and hear all these recitations and some articles from places like the Yaqeen Institute, which have done a great job of explaining the origin and the type of differences that we see. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.